Howdy YouTube family, it's Baltarin coming to you again with another day's topic. Today we're going to discuss how to make the most money as a nurse, specifically as a travel nurse. So if you're a nurse currently or are a nursing student, you already are thinking about, I'm sure, how much can you make and how fast can you make it because you have student loans to pay off, you've done all that hard work and years of schooling and the actual task you do as a nurse is really vital and important to the healthcare field. So you want to be, um, you know, paid back for that. Uh, so this is the best way to make the most. My first tip is to specialize. You have to get involved in a specialty. Uh, I know a lot of nursing schools for, um, push this whole mentality of go into med surge and do med surge for a few years at least or stay in med surge if you like it. Uh, but and that's fine and uh, you know I've, m one of my girlfriends was a med surge nurse I, I like med surge nurses they're vital to have but that's not the way to make the most money uh, med surge is usually the lesser paid of the specialties and if you're really wanting to get the most bang for your buck you're going to want to go for something like intensive care unit ed labor and delivery um, sometimes the OBGYN, uh, cath lab they make good money um, Sometimes psych nurses make decent money, uh, although that's a whole different thing. Psych nursing is almost not even nursing anymore. It's more like being a therapist. But um, So those are some areas that you can specialize in. NICU, of course, neonatal ICU. Uh, those are areas that are usually highly sought after. They're highly specialized. They require lots of certifications, lots of education. Um, you have to keep up with a lot of competencies on those units. That's difficult to do but you're usually rewarded financially for those things. Another way that uh, specializing comes in handy is when it's time to go travel nursing. The specialty units usually pay you more as a travel nurse. Uh, if you're gonna travel nurse in the cath lab, or if you have L&D experience, which is labor and delivery, uh, or if you have uh, cardiac ICU experience, things like that, different hospitals will pay you more money because those are highly specialized areas and it's harder to find staff nurses in their area that the hospital's located to work that unit. So it behooves them to pay a travel nurse to move there from somewhere else uh, who already has those specialized skills and can hit the ground running and just start working and help them out with their staffing needs. So that's where you end up making more money. Um, I have actually travel nurse with a buddy of mine. He is actually a med surge nurse and we went to the same hospital and was pretty much working the same hours and doing the same type of thing, but he made, a, he brought home about $200 less a week than me just for the fact that he worked med surge and I worked critical care. So um, I've noticed that kind of disparaging pay in a couple other places too with other med surge nurses that I know. Uh, by no means does it mean med surge nurses don't get paid uh, very well, but they just are not going to make quite as much as what a lot of your specialties will be in most situations. That's not saying every single situation is always exactly that way, but if you really want a sure bet to make your maximum dollar, you want to be in the specialty. Now that you've got your specialty nailed down and you're figuring out where you want to go with your specialty, now it's time to discuss the next second topic, location. Where are you living? Uh, if you're wanting to make the maximum dollar as a nurse, it matters where you're living. Of course, I'm talking about within the United States. Um, I think the United States pays the highest out of all of the countries in the world for their nursing staff. Uh, we have lots of international nurses that come to the U.S. because the nurses make double or more than what their nurses were paid over in their respective countries. So nurses are definitely treated a lot better in the United States and make more money than almost, I would say, everywhere else. Um, Canada is pretty decent, but uh, they're pretty similar to the U.S. Anyway, um, in the U.S. itself, where you're going to live matters. If you're going to live in the southeast and you're, if you're from the southeast, Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, um, Florida, those areas, if you're from there and you want to go to school there and you want to stay and work there, your family's there, that kind of thing, then you're going to probably make the least amount of money out of all the American nurses. They actually pay very poorly down in those areas. I am from that area myself and uh, went to school, my college in uh, J Jacksonville State University was in Alabama and I worked as a new grad ICU nurse in Alabama. 
And so the starting pay, I think, was $17.25 an hour as a new grad, and that was in 2012. So we're not talking about 1972, it was that rate. That was recent, and I'm pretty sure they still pay that rate uh, from what I know from my friends still working there. So you really don't get paid well in those regions. Um, if you want to make more money, you're really going to want to go as a travel nurse or even a staff nurse. If you want to be a staff nurse, you will make more money if you go to areas up on the northeastern coast, I'd say Connecticut, New York, um, Boston, Massachusetts region. region. Um, if you go over to um, the west coast, all the way to the Washington State, Seattle area, uh, Portland, Oregon, down through the whole coast of California, California, which is where I'm at currently, they, uh, they are notorious for paying their nurses crazy good money. And they also have really, really cushy jobs and uh, tons of benefits, too. Uh, so that's a really awesome state to work in. Um, Texas pays decent, actually. Um, not great, but considering the cost of living is less in Texas, their ratio of lower cost of living versus pay rate is actually pretty good. Uh, a lot of people will argue with you that, uh, oh, well, the South pays less, but it's because things cost less there, so it's not a big deal. It balances out, but it actually does not balance out. Uh, Starbucks does not care where you're living. They're their cup of coffee they're going to charge you will be the same in New York City as it will be in Alabama. So if you're making $17 an hour, that $5 cup of coffee just cost you a big chunk of your hourly wage. So it, that's just a quick, simple, layman's example to show you that it doesn't really equate out. Uh, yeah, your house may cost you a little less or significantly less in Alabama, but buying a plane ticket, going to Starbucks, uh, going to the movies, things like that, all those things that everyone does daily that they spend their money on, that's going to cost the same pretty much everywhere you're at. Um, so your location is important. And if you have any specific questions about locations I know of specifically that pay well versus that pay badly, you can contact me. Um, as a travel nurse, you know, I keep my, uh, my finger on the pulse of that because it's important to me based off where I travel to. Uh, how they're treating their nurses and how they're paying their nurses because I don't want to travel there if they're not paying well. My last point on this topic is actually advanced practice. So as a nurse, you know, of course we have advanced practice nurses. You can go on to school to be a certified nurse midwife. You can go on to school and get a master's uh, or doctorate and be a um, nurse practitioner, a CRNP, uh, who prescribes medications and rounds on patients and works you know in a team with other physicians to pretty much fulfill the physician's role and uh, you get compensated fairly well for that uh, not as well as they should but you do get it compensated well and usually get pretty good hours too so a better lifestyle and pretty good pay uh, but your ultimate thing that most nurses know about if you want your maximum money as a nurse you want the most autonomy you want to do the coolest of the coolest stuff um, you want to go to Certified Registered Nurse Anesthesia School, or Anesthetist School. It's uh, shorthand is CRNA. Essentially, you practice like an anesthesiologist, uh, except you have uh, your CRNA degree. Now, that previously was a master's degree, and historically it's been a master's degree, but now is currently, in 2015, transitioning to a doctorate program. So um, they have all the programs in the United States have until 2025 to all be converted and fully be converted to doctorate programs. Right now they're in transition, so like about half of them are probably doctorate and half are still masters, but they're all transitioning, so they will all be doctors by 2025. Uh, so you want to go to school and get your doctorate in nursing practice as a certified registered nurse anesthetist. They make major money. And they also do a really awesome role in nursing. Um, it's actually what I am doing. Um, I'm interviewing in a couple weeks for, uh, for a CRNA program. And I'm hoping to get in. But um, the only, uh, well, there's lots of requirements for CRNA. That's probably why there are some people who don't apply for it. You have to be an ICU nurse for a few years first. Uh, you have to have your CCRN uh, certification, which is very expensive and difficult to get. Um, there's a lot of other, some schools require you to have like physics and advanced physics. You have to have like organic chemistry. You have to take the GRE, which is a terrible test to take. I hated every moment of that test. So there's a lot of requirements to do it, but it's totally worth it if you do it.
you might ask, so if I do all those things and I become a CRNA, what's the benefit of it? What's the real pay? Yeah, I get to do cool things. Yeah, I put people to sleep. I get to work like an anesthesiologist pretty much. And even in some states, you can work completely independent as a CRNA without an anesthesiologist in-house connected with you. You practice virtually autonomously on your own. Um, so what's the benefit besides the cool job? Well, the real benefit is financially, even in the poor states in the southeast where people are paid terrible pay and things are, you know, not great for financially for nurses, you can make one hundred and fifty to one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a year. Um, that is amazing considering nurses make fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year there. You've pretty much tripled your income in that region. And if you come over to like the San Francisco area or where I was at in the Bay Area um, back in the winter, those nurses, those CRNAs make $225,000 a year. I mean, you, you could make close to a quarter of a million dollars a year as a nurse doing that. And you have a very cushy, very nice job. And you're doing something that's very valuable to the nursing profession. And um, you're, you're providing service for patients that's very, very important. So yeah, it's hard work. Yeah, it's hard to get there. But that's where your max dollar is as a nurse. So if that's what you're interested in and you're interested in doing something cool and you really want to know what your maximum amount of income is in the nursing field, it's CRNA. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If there's any of these new grad nurses out here looking for information like I was or people who are interested in the nursing field but they're really not sure what the details are on it, um, I'm hoping that this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions about something, you can just hit me up in the comments and ask me, and I'll try and answer everything as honest and open as I can with you. Um, I am in Long Beach, California right now, which is it's pretty much the beaches of Los Angeles. is where I'm currently working in a cardiac uh, ICU. So I'm enjoying things right now. This is actually the new home that I'm staying in. It's very nice. It's the balcony off the living room that I'm sitting out here in. And um, it's kind of a cool little area out here. But um, I'll show you guys some more around this area. And maybe some upcoming videos will be at coming out about Long Beach and stuff. And kind of give you an idea what Long Beach is like. But I recommend it for all you guys interested in the L.A. area. Uh, so see you next time.